Radio Hillsdale, WCSR, Julie Hayes, and I have a special in-studio guest with me. Uh, the You're going to ask why. I have the Fort Lauderdale Chief of Police <laughs> in the studio today. Why? Why? Because Bill Schultz is a 1992 North Adams Jerome high school graduate. I Bill. Am. I am. What are you doing here? It's it's winter. And well, you're first of all, Florida I heard now. you had a warrant for your arrest in Florida, so I figured I'd just get that out of the way while uh, I was visiting my family this weekend. The radio station can't afford to extradite me right now. <laughs> this is our busy season, so I can't do that. Exactly. Um, but, Bill, just, you know, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for your service, first of all. Thank you. Because you have a long tenured career. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Um, but you're in town for something super special tonight. I am. So I was contacted earlier this year by uh, Janice was Fry when I was at the school. Janice Roberts sent me a letter and said that I had been nominated for the North Adams Jerome uh, Wall of Fame. And she asked me to submit an application and submit some information, which I did. And then in July, I received another letter saying I had been selected for the Wall of Fame, which is a true honor. Uh, I am so happy that our school has decided to do this. And I'm told they did it because they want to show their students the wide variety of careers that their alumni have entered into uh, in Michigan and well beyond, as, as the case with me. Now, Mary Halley shared, now I caught up with you last night. Yes. I saw you randomly at Underdogs. Yes, yeah, she so did. So this is how, how this all formulated. <laughs> Which Mary, I've never been to before, and it's amazing. Well, it's new. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's a great place. Um, but uh, Mary Halley said that the woman who invented cruise control yes. was a North Adams Jerome graduate. Yeah, and I'm finding out all these individuals who I had no idea have such storied careers and stories about what they've done with their lives. And I'm looking forward to tonight because I'm going to go early and they're going to introduce me to everyone else who's been already inducted into the Hall of Fame. Nice. That is so exciting. That's great. So, Bill, let's go back. You graduated in North Adams, Jerome in 1992. I I was there. I played in the band. Yes. I remember that because my niece, April, was one of your classmates. It was a big day for the family because she's the oldest. Yes. Um, So it was really it was a great day. I remember it very well. Um, so you graduate, and then what happens with your life? So I left, and by the way, April was one of my best friends all through yes. school. I love her. Uh, I shout left out. and immediately, shout out to her, uh, I immediately went to Eastern Michigan University uh, and began my undergraduate studies in criminal justice. And while there, I worked on the university's campus and continued on and became a graduate assistant. And what what drew you to criminal justice in the first place? What did you want to do with that? I will tell you, and I'm going to give another shout out to Travis Lehman was in my class as well. And his dad was a very well-known, very well-respected state trooper in the Jonesville Post. And uh, he, seeing him and interacting with him growing up, always intrigued me about police work. But he was always so stoic and respectful and well-respected. That always stuck with me. So when I went into Eastern, I was looking at either law enforcement or uh, law, law in general, an attorney. Uh, but quickly I realized uh, I liked the uh, on-the-street portion of law enforcement, and I just followed my path. Okay. I haven't looked back since. All right. So you're post-EMU, mm-hmm. and then what? So as I am, uh, I finished my master's degree at Eastern, I do a national search for jobs, and this is in uh, August of 2001. So I had put out applications, and I had been in the application process with Fort Lauderdale for three weeks when 9-11 happened, Mm. the attacks of 9-11. I received a call that afternoon from my background recruiter stating they had just received full funding from the mayor and city manager to fill every vacancy. At the time, cities had no idea what was going on. We did not know if these domestic attacks were going to continue or not. So agencies within uh, America decided we have to fill all our vacancies because we know the military is going to be deployed. So what may have taken three to four months for me to be hired, I was hired within three weeks. Uh, As soon as airspace opened up, I went and did two interview trips. I was in Florida October 1st. Wow. Yeah, it it was a really surreal time for me and for law enforcement in general. And did you ever want to end up someplace like Florida? I did. That's so when I did my job search, I looked uh, primarily for places without snow. Yes. Nothing against snow. I love my Michigan, <laughs> but I was ready to try something different, and I wanted a beach, and I wanted the ocean. So the Atlantic Ocean was calling my name. So how perfect was that? What it was a blessing. absolutely perfect. So that was 2001? Yes. Then what? So I began my career down there, and... 
you know, I was in patrol for four years, but I immediately tested for sergeant within four years of being there. That's the first level supervisor. Uh, received it fairly quick, and then the rest is history. I hit the ranks of lieutenant, captain, major, and then uh, one year ago this month, uh, police chief. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in my 24th year of service now, and it's been fantastic. I couldn't ask for a better um, city management commission. We have so much support down there, and my officers are just absolutely phenomenal, and my professional staff. All my staff are amazing. What are some of the challenges you face as being the chief versus, you know, not being the chief, just just being a law enforcement officer, showing up to do your job? Now you're the chief. Tell me a little bit about, you know, you talked – last night when we were conversing about how you still go out on some of those calls that nobody wants you. You still try to stay in touch with uh, your officers just just so that you can um, realize what their challenges are. What are your challenges that you face? Yeah, I will tell you, uh, as I went through my career, I always kept a mental and sometimes even a written list of if I were chief, I would change this. So those are some things that I immediately started working on, and it all really centers around collaboration. I'm a collaborative leader style, and I really want to make sure that we have the best working environment and morale we can. But uh, you mentioned it. Uh, so, so far in one year, I've taken uh, three shifts, about 14 hours, so that I can hit all three of my shifts and really get in and take the calls for service, take the accident reports, take the written reports, uh, especially the calls that are uh, not necessarily what an officer wants to hit, land on because of all the paperwork. I do that because I would never ask my officers or anyone that works for me to do anything I would not do myself. I wear a uniform every day. I don't have to as chief, but I do. Uh, and it's just showing the troops that I am right there with them throughout, and I always have their back. That's a sign of a great leader. Thank you. Thank <laughs> so you. you're you're a year in. Um was it everything that you thought it would be, or what are some things that weren't the way you thought it would be? So I'm a year in, and it's a lot more than I thought. I thought I had an idea being in that department all my career. But once you become chief, there's so many more responsibilities that you just simply don't know until you're there. Uh, and we have a lot going on. We're building a brand new, very large police department. Um, we have... Uh, a growing city exponentially by the day. And there's just so much going on in addition to what a chief does on a normal day uh, that I just had no clue. But uh, a year in, I finally feel a bit more settled, uh, and I'm, I'm really going in with the uh, head-on charge. Now, you mentioned earlier that you have uh, tremendous support from the city and other uh, departments of the city. How How's the community support in Fort Lauderdale? It's fantastic. So we have uh, a very substantial community engagement group of officers, but our community just steps up and embraces us. They support us. Uh, whenever we have any type of uh, situation in, this, in the department, for instance, I unfortunately had a 29-year-old female officer died suddenly of COVID a couple years ago. The community stepped up in huge ways. They helped her family. She had just had her first child. Um, her husband is also an officer with another department. And um, just getting on their feet, uh, they didn't really necessarily have the resources right away. Our community raised money. They stepped up. They were there for the family. That's just one example. But they've supported us throughout these years. Uh, we have a tremendous uh, relationship with our community. Uh, in fact, I just got a text message from one of the business association presidents asking where I've been the last mm -hmm. few days. They missed you. I, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you foster that relationship with the community to keep it positive? I am always in the community. I will normally during the day, I'll try and get my meetings done by two or three. And then I schedule proactively meetings with homeowners uh, associations, with business owners, but more so just with our uh, grassroots community leaders. Uh, and I attend as many community events in the evening as I can uh, and school events. I'm always in the community seven days a week. Uh, and we, as a department, plan them ourselves. We do what we call front porch briefings we'll, uh, at the beginning of a shift. We'll take all the officers out of this uh, police department and put them in someone's front lawn. And we do our actual roll call briefing there. All the officers introduce themselves to the neighbors, and then the neighbors get to ask questions of us. How often do you do that? Uh, whenever We try and do it at least a few times a month, but whenever we get an opportunity, someone offers their lawn, we're there. That 
is pretty outstanding. It's really cool. <laughs> now, is yeah. that something that the, the neighbors will just come out and gather around and they do. watch? Very okay. informal. Uh-huh. They get an invite ahead of time. They We let them know we're coming, uh, and we'll bring bottle, bottled water, sometimes coffee and such. Uh, and sometimes if we have uh, an even larger gathering, we'll bring um, some lunch, and we'll just break bread with them and enjoy an afternoon with them. Wow, building yeah. relationships. Absolutely. Yep, <laughs> building community, we call it. Well, Bill, is there anything else that you wanted to share with, you know, your friends and family maybe listening? And you had a gathering recently over at Janoffi's. I did. It was a great turnout. It was fantastic. Saturday afternoon, I invited friends and family and North Adams alumni over. We had about 50 people showed up. Shout out to Mark and all the crew at Janoffi's. They did a Isn't fantastic just, job. I mean, amazing. Spinning image of his dad running that restaurant. I, above and beyond what I, my expectations we were. Yeah. So proud of them. And, uh, no, it was so great. I saw some teachers, uh, Mrs. – you called her Hallie. It was Kleckner when well, I knew her. Well, I called her, her Miss Kleckner because yes. that's who we knew her as. And then Mr. <laughs> Cook was there, uh, Mrs. Sharp, all these – all these blasts from the past teachers, and, and like I said, Janice Fry and, and Bonnie um, Norris, and so many people showed up. Uh, the whole Goli family was there, my family, the Renishes, and, of course, shout out to my mom, uh, Joyce uh, Stone Schultz was there. And it was just a fantastic day of stories about North Adams, about Hillsdale, and, and just community, and I, I can't wait to uh, to get to the school tonight, and I'm going to go this afternoon and speak to the students as well. Oh, awesome! And then you met with our chief of police and I our did. sheriff. Today. I went and met the sheriff this morning, and I met the Hillsdale City Chief. Sat down and had great conversation with both of them, and it was so nice of them to uh, welcome me in and, and really get perspective of their departments, their operations, and mine. That is, uh, I don't know. That just seems like a great way to to foster relationships across uh, the nation. Do you do that with other departments as well? I do. I do. Do you go to conferences and stuff like that for law enforcement? Absolutely. how How do you get to know other law enforcement? Well, in this case, I specifically wanted to meet the sheriff and pass on condolences for the loss of Deputy Butler. Um, I wanted to come in June when these services were happening, but we were having some flooding issues back Mm -hmm. then. But, no, I I do. So what I've done since I've become chief, wherever I have a chance, I try and make a quick appointment with the law enforcement leaders. I want their perspectives. I think we learn from each other, uh, and I'm never going to say no to good ideas uh, and new new concepts. So that's how I get them. And conferences, yes. I was just in Boston a few weeks ago for the International Association Chiefs of Police Conference. Uh, it's an annual conference. It's the largest in the world of law enforcement executives. I will always go to that because that's where you gain the new perspectives, the innovation. Um, as with any industry, uh, it's absolutely changing, and we need to be at the forefront in America. We can't do things the way that we've done them for the last 50 years. Absolutely not. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, always, always getting better. <laughs> yeah. Bill Schultz, North Adams Jerome graduate. One last thing. I'm going to play your class song. Okay. Do you remember, class of 1992, what your song was? So I'm I'm going to get this wrong. I thought the group was Boys to Men. Um, that part is correct. I that will is tell correct. you that. Okay. So I thought it was End of the Road, but I, I think that's wrong. And I've been, oh, man, what would it be? Is there a story to this with you? The, yes. So <laughs> when, when we took the vote, I wanted a different song. Uh, I wanted a, a, a hair hard rock metal band that song. That shock me. <laughs> and, and uh, well, my mullet and mustache at the time was leading me towards a, a poison or, or something. You song. and Travis Forbes had a mullet contest. I we think, did. Going on, unspoken. We did. He always won, though. He always won. <laughs> of course he did. Um, so, no, when we took the vote and I lost and, and the song went through, I said, isn't this song the lyrics about deceased people and mm. not not graduation? That's how I felt about it. Okay. Uh, it was, I don't know, song lyrics are what anyone makes of them themselves. True. So that's what I thought, but I can't remember the name of the so song. So the song is, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday. Okay, there we go. Yes, and I still stand by my thoughts, but, <laughs> so but Bill, I get it. <laughs> uh, so you're being inducted into the North Adams Jerome Wall of Fame tonight yes. at what time? Uh, 6 p.m. in the main gymnasium before the basketball game. With Will Carlton Academy at 6.30, which you will hear yes. right here on 92.1 WCSR, by the way. Excellent. So, Bill, I thank you so much for your time. I was so glad to uh, catch up with you. I thank haven't you. seen you since mm, you graduated, probably. Probably, no. <laughs> and thank you so much for inviting me in. Uh, it's an honor to finally be on The Dale.
Yeah. I, I love mean, it. I hello. Love it. This is, I listen this is, every time I'm in town. This is a high point for your career, I think. Absolutely, it is. 100%. <laughs> so have a great night tonight, and Thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much. Bill Schultz, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, police chief on Radio Hillsdale, WCSR.